Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Peter Duffin, yeah, I'm the SVP of Brand and Marketing at Lincoln Center, um, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background into our kind of experiments with AI and chatbots and trying to really solve some of our core consumer needs uh, and the, a lot of the issues we were seeing with our consumers. So, so first of all, I need to give you a little bit of background on Lincoln Center. Um, because I think it really helps explain why this solution was so great for us and why it was so needed. So Lincoln Center is you know, this iconic place in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It's about 16.2 uh, acres of land. Uh, we have 11 of the world's greatest performing arts uh, organizations in one place. It's kind of unprecedented in the world. Um, and it really is a gem of New York. But because there are these 11 different organizations and there's, you know, there's some two of the world-class conservatories there, the Juilliard School, the School of American Ballet, we have a performing arts library, um, we have you know, the Metropolitan Opera is there, the New York City Ballet, New York Philharmonic. So you have this real range of organizations. And people have different affiliations there. So we're like this umbrella steward brand that helps promote the activities of the campus. And so, you know, the way I talk about this, it sounds like they're set up for a joke. Four people went to Lincoln Center last night, and you ask them the next day, what did you go and see? And one of them says, well, I went to David Geffen Hall. And the next one says, well, I went to the New York Philharmonic. And the next one says, well, I went to Lincoln Center. And the last one says, well, I went and saw Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Symphony. You know, they all went to exactly the same show, but their level of affiliation is very different. And so when they're coming to LincolnCenter.org or one of our kind of online properties, different people are coming with different ideas in their head of what they're looking for. And that's been a real challenge for us as we try and serve our customers um, because it can be very confusing. And if you have someone who's, you know, coming looking for Marla's Fifth and we're really talking about the New York, New York Philharmonic, they may not find what they're looking for. And so we wanted to really investigate solutions that could help navigate people to what they were looking for and help them out. Uh, we have about 4.5 million people come to events every year at Lincoln Center, and there's another 2 million on top of this who just come to the Lincoln Center and hang out. So it's a, there's a lot of people here that have lots of questions. Added to that, we're not just New York based. We have 11 million people who watch our national uh, TV show live from Lincoln Center. And we've also been in movie theaters recently. And so people coming to LincolnCenter.org are also looking for live from Lincoln Center. And they like heard on PBS that you have falsettos coming up. They want to find that information on LincolnCenter.org as well. So, you know, lots of people, lots of questions. Um, you know, so we love throwing this one in. The economic impact of Lincoln Center is about 2.4 billion every year, the combined activities. So all of this you know, activity, all of these things going on le led to a real challenge for us. Uh, people have lots of questions. They, uh, we could have up to 30 different events on any given day at Lincoln Center. So if you just imagine someone coming to try and navigate that, let me help you get to the thing you're looking for. And we have an existing phone, uh, phone uh, service called Center Charge. It's been around 40 years. Um, and you know, it was a, it's really just set up to sell tickets. Uh, that's its pr primary purpose. That's how it's judged. That's what its KPIs are around. But because it's really the only public phone number around everything that's going on at Lincoln Center, we get 23% of those calls that are coming into Center Charge are really just around information requests. Um, you know, someone the other day was phoned up and said, um, I heard that, you know, you're doing this thing, lady, my, you know, something, some Broadway show. And, you know, it took a long time to get out of them that they were really trying to look for My Fair Lady at Lincoln Center Theater, which just want, had these amazing uh, reviews in the New York Times. And it's got 11 Tony nominations. So they were trying to find that information out. Um, they phoned center charge, they weren't trying to buy a ticket, they were just trying to find information out. So that was, it. you know, you get these kind of very random calls coming in. Um, and over the past few years, I don't know if any of you have uh, phone services, uh, but we've seen our numbers of phone service calls going down, but actually, which is what this uh, graph shows you um, over the last few quarters, kind of 
pretty significant drop in the number of calls coming in, but my staff hours are staying the same. So I'm paying as, you know, as much money, but I'm getting less revenue in, and the kind of delta there is all to do with these information requests, people calling up, and they're spending a lot of time on the phone trying to uh, answer questions. So we really did kind of reach this uh, kind of crisis point where we needed to find a low-cost solution to deal with all these questions coming in. Um, we have a really robust website, lincolncenter.org, but because you can have 30 different events going on in a day, it can be a little overwhelming and daunting. And also, I think one of the things we've really found is because there's, you know, it's 11 different organizations, historically we haven't been the most friendly in how we talk about ourselves because we have to be kind of democratic in how we talk about everything. And so we wanted to find a solution that could be a little bit more personable, uh, a little bit friendlier, and provide a kind of a real nice brand touch point uh, for our patrons. So that led us to Wolfie. So Wolfie is for Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And, and you know, deliberately we wanted to give it a little bit of a cheeky name, uh, make it more approachable and friendly. Um, we worked with uh, Pipestream to develop this, which has been a, a wonderful relationship. Um, you know, we've had some, we're gonna go through at the end, I've got some kind of metrics of how this did. Uh, but we had about four times increase in our engagement duration just on the chatbot. So people are really spending time in there and they're getting the answers they need to questions uh, that they have. And we, our, our customer segment here is really a very broad swath of uh, patrons. And to begin with, we really focused on our existing patron base. Um, there's a lot of talk in the performing arts about expanding to get new audiences into the arts, and we didn't want to deal with that out of the gate. We knew we had a lot of problems with our core patrons getting the information they wanted, and so that was who we focused on. And we have did a lot of work to kind of dimensionalize who they are and worked with Pipestream to really kind of help us and them understand those patrons and what their needs were going to be. Um, there's lots of integrations in this solution. Um, we have a really awesome database that feeds lincolncenter.org that has all the patron information, or rather it has all the kind of event information within that database. So you have API calls going from the chatbot out to this database, pulling information in real time. Um, and we really, you know, to really service these core patrons focused on the find an event feature and also a lot of frequently asked questions. Oddly, if you look at our kind of search results on lincolncenter.org, what's the top question? One of the top questions is always about parking. Like, where do I park my car? And so we really wanted to be able to surface that information, not just make it about finding an event, which obviously I love because that's selling tickets, um, but also really serving the patron and helping that customer service experience. And so the parking component of this was really key, really understanding, working with Pipestream to understand what patrons are looking for currently on the site and how they're really searching for information and how we could uh, surface that for our patrons. So this is like the, the, a kind of classic implementation methodology, right? You do like, we spend a lot of time with the folks at Pipestream doing the scope analysis. Uh, and I think, you know, if you, I'm sure a lot of you have been through these projects, the time you invest in that scope analysis just pays off dividends down the road. Uh, and really kind of understanding the problem and identifying the problem clearly and succinctly it was key to us uh, in this successful implementation. Um, we, because uh, during that scope implement, uh, scope analysis, you're really looking at, you know, what are the data sources that you have, uh, what a, different databases should we be connecting to, what makes sense now. Uh, there's a lot of talk, you know, what are the kind of small early wins that we could do to really prove the case for this, and then we have lots of grand plans for the future of our chatbot. Um, but we wanted to really focus in at the beginning on the core of this and get that right. Um, I think one of the things that's been really key to this uh, solution has been the analytics that come along with it and really understanding our patron journey throughout the chatbot. Um, and that has paid dividends for us um, because the great thing about this solution, the Pipestream solution, is that you can really dive in and see where are people abandoning um, in their kind of flow throughout the artificial intelligence kind of network on the back end. So you can really then dive in and kind of go, okay, red flag, red flag, we have a problem here. Let's really identify and focus in on this area and propose some solutions and work through that and see if we can improve those different areas. 
Um, so, you know, the KPIs of this were pretty uh, basic. You know, we wanted to decrease our bounce rate, which is about 40, 43%. Um, increase our net promoter score, make sure our patrons are having a, a great time on the site and getting the solutions that they needed and the answers that they needed. And then increase patron return rate um, and making sure people are having that great experience and then uh, coming back and uh, re-experiencing. So within the, you know, find an event, as I was saying, you know, people have different affiliations uh, about what they're looking for within an event. So, uh, you know, that someone could be looking for Marla's Fifth, someone could be looking for the New York Philharmonic events, someone could be going, you know, it's my anniversary in two months, I want to treat my uh, special someone to a wonderful night at Lincoln Center, how do I do that? You know, they're very date-oriented. Some people are very celebrity-oriented. They want to see Gustavo Dudamel conducting. And so there's, all again, all these different kind of levels of affiliation that we needed to uh, prepare for. And then also there's the person who just knows, well, I want to go to Lincoln Center and I want to go to what's hot. Uh, I want to understand what the cool thing is, and so I want to, you know, I want to be in with the cool kids and go into the really popular shows. And so we wanted to kind of surface that as well. Um, Purchasing tickets is obviously the, a kind of key deliverable for us here, and this is one of the services we can provide to the constituent organizations like the New York Philharmonic and the Metropolitan Opera is showing them that when someone came to LincolnCenter.org was looking for a Metropolitan Opera uh, event, we were able to convert that to a sale for them, um, and showing that really helps uh, prove our value to those constituent organizations and obviously help our patron too. Uh, so that was a key KPI for us. Um, and then in this frequently asked questions area, I mean, I was mentioning about parking, but there's also a lot of, we get these kind of random questions about what is Lincoln Center, who are you? So we wanted to be able to really surface that and answer those questions. Uh, you know, the solution works fantastically both on desktop and on mobile. It's kind of really uh, built into the, that's at the core of the product, so it wasn't like we had to kind of jerry-rig a, a mobile solution. Uh, and this kind of gives you a little bit of an example of the language. So welcome to Lincoln Center, I'm Wolfie, an automated messaging system, otherwise known as a chatbot. Um, I can help get tickets for an event, directions and answers to common questions. And we, you know, very consciously wanted to make it clear that this was an automated solution. Um, there's lots of, you know, the, kind of these chat features on different websites where you're actually talking to a live person. And we wanted to set up the expectation very clearly with our patrons. Uh, this solution, we could kind of, if you went down like a, a rabbit hole in the solution, you can transfer, you could, it has the ability to transfer over to a live representative uh, to help answer your question. We haven't uh, enabled that yet. Um, we're still kind of working out the kind of logistics of the staffing of that, um, but there is that feature there if needed. Um, click through that. The other great thing about this is at the end of the chat experience, we always do this kind of happy face, smile, uh, unhappy face uh, to see not only, you know, trade, kind of get, get a sense of our net promoter score, but also then you can track this back to what their journey was throughout the chatbot and work out where the problems were. And you'll see this in some of the stats we have later on, that because of this feature, we were able to see that, oh, you know, like, 29% of the people who are dissatisfied, that's coming from the calendar, or 30% are coming from the frequently asked questions. And so we need to kind of dive in and improve that component to improve our kind of net promoter score here. This is like the, the overwhelming, uh, obligatory overwhelming tech diagram um, that is, uh, <laughs> really talks to how you can make this seamless front end experience, but like, Underneath the water, the duck's legs are really kind of paddling like crazy uh, because it really is integrating into all these different um, systems and APIs um, connections. And, you know, I think that was one of the things we really focused on here was creating this kind of disparity that, like, we wanted the front end to be completely seamless and have this kind of delightful voice. And I think the animations are really beautiful, the way the kind of questions come up, the way that your responses kind of resolve are quite delightful. But on the back end, there's all this really pretty uh, rigorous and complicated uh, kind of back end tech that's helping really explain to the patron what's going on. So this is a quick video that shows you the experience. 
you know, you click on chat with us, um, that kind of intro comes up, I want to find out about Lincoln Center. We have a kind of set uh, uh, number of questions you can scroll through, and one of our findings is this list is probably too long. Uh, but how do I get to Lincoln Center? So it's pretty straightforward information there. Um, I can also ask for directions here. How am I traveling? Am I coming by car, bus? Uh, we, I'm coming from north, south, or east. Do I want to park? And here, you know, what we're doing here with reserving parking is we're bringing in the website's kind of native parking reservation page. And then you can just go in and scroll through this and make your kind of parking reservation, which, as I've said, is a very popular feature. And, you know, as I said, I think the, the animation here is really delightful. Um, we've heard from patrons that they, they kind of really do respond to that. It has a very friendly feel. It has a very kind of delightful um, ambience to it. So, you know, this is what we've learned in our experience here. Um, you know, about 12% of online uh, users are engaging with Wolfie, uh, which we, it's higher than we thought it was going to be. Um, they're spending about four times longer on the site because of it, the, those people who are choosing into it. So they they're really are engaging their time and investing their time in Wolfie. There's a higher conversion rate. You know, my website conversion rate is about 3%. About 5% of people who go through the, the chat bot are actually landing on a purchase page. Um, and then my bounce rate is quite significantly lower. So we really are kind of capturing people here. They're having a good time. They're finding the information they want. Um, and they're you know, kind of staying there. This is, you know, it's really kind of interesting word cloud for me. Like, I'm always trying to find patron information and patron insights. And so to find out what people are really looking for here is, uh, and I think this is one of the, those areas where I'm sure all of us have these notions about our companies and what our patrons are looking for and what they're about. And then one of the really interesting things in going through a project like this is you're like, oh, actually, that's not what I thought it was going to be, uh, was going to be the top kind of re result terms for the search and what people are really trying to do here. Um, I think it, this also talks to the kind of real-time nature of Lincoln Center in that, you know, the, you'll see one of the large words here is lady. That's for My Fair Lady, uh, which is that Lincoln Center theater show. Three months ago, that wasn't even on the radar at Lincoln Center. So we needed a solution which, you know, uh, our chatbot really does deliver that was real time, was engaging in these da uh, databases that was going to really search through all the different events in a real time way to kind of respond to all of the kind of changing nature of activities at Lincoln Center. So this is what I was talking about earlier, the heat map. It's a little small, but uh, you can really see this is kind of the... Um, chart that shows you the kind of pathways that are going on behind the chat bot. Uh, so you, you kind of have your entry point, and then there's the division point. Are you going to say yes or no? Am I looking for directions or events? And then you kind of go down these little pathways. And what you can do is see, you know, if there's red, you've got like high abandonment rates. And so these are areas we really need to kind of zoom in on and explore what's going on in those areas and really try and uh, deep dive and understand behavior and do some iterative responses to try and change that and really solve uh, the issues that patrons are having. So these are some kind of core insights that we've had. 67% uh, 60, of users are there to find an event, which is pretty, you know, kind of to be expected, but a lot of people then are there to really answer questions as well and find out um, uh, kind of answers to burning questions they have about events at Lincoln Center. And then 44% of those people are browsing by date um, who are coming in looking for an event. 32% search for a specific event, so they come in. I mean, I think this is actually very interesting because, you know, we spent, you know, a lot of money developing our website 
and people are choosing, they know what they want to come to, they want to come to My Fair Lady, and they're going to the chat bot, they're not going to the big search on the website. They want this kind of more personalized experience uh, to help get them to where they're going to. So I actually, th I think our going into this, our assumption was the chat bot will be used by people who are kind of exploring, they didn't know maybe exactly what they wanted to go to, um, but our use case is much wider than that. It's actually people who do want know what they want, they just want to get their information in a different way. They want to find it through the chatbot. 75% um, of users search for a specific event and they were able to find it, which is great. Um, and then, you know, there's about 64% 64, 64 of people who are actually going through to purchase when they're given that option, uh, which is great news for our constituents. So as we've kind of gone through this process, um, one of the things I've really enjoyed about uh, working with Pipestream is, you know, it is a very iterative process, which, you know, is absolutely how I like to work in these kind of tech developments. And so we're constantly thinking about how do we improve, how do we move on to the next step. So, you know, there's been some things we've learned that haven't worked exactly as we wanted them to. Um, so 30, about 30% 30 of people who open the chatbot are immediately closing it. Uh, what they're presented with is not, it's either not what they were expected or it's a little overwhelming. And so we really want to uh, kind of change that uh, ratio um, and decrease that number of immediate abandonments um, because obviously there's a lot of great information in there. So we're looking at, you know, working with uh, Pipestream to develop some more kind of animated GIFs or more friendly visuals. Um, one thing I'm I'm learning every day, and I'm sure you guys are seeing it too, is people read less and less, and they need like visual cues. And so I think even those two short like sentences at the beginning of the chat bar are a little bit overwhelming for some people, and they're like, I don't want to read that, I just want to get onto what I want to do. And so we're trying to make this more of a visual hook than a kind of language-based hook. And then 52%, about 50% of people who inter interact with the FAQs are dropping off. And then 29% of our kind of sad surveys are coming from those people who are going through the FAQs. So we really needed to look at, you know, was there something wrong in how we were talking about these FAQs, how we were kind of uh, presenting that to the patron? Was there something wrong in the information we had in the FAQs? Was it too overwhelming? Uh, these are things that we're still kind of working through. We are gonna, we've changed the name of FAQs to About Lincoln Center because that's a little bit more descriptive of actually what's within the, that area. Um, and then, you know, some more findings that we've uh, had, and what I really, again, like is the findings we've had have been actionable. I mean, I'm a big fan of research if it leads me to actually change what I'm doing, uh, and that's what we found with this chatbot um, kind of research and analysis that we've done. You know, I, it's great to get research that makes you feel smarter, but if it doesn't actually lead you to actually change what you're doing, like, who cares? I'm all about this kind of research, which has really been directional. And I think, as I was saying, this kind of happy or sad survey is really, at the end, has really helped us work out where the problems were. So this kind of event by date feature, um, we, which was 44% of people using Wolfie, but then we were getting like 30%, or that 20% of our, 23% of our sad surveys are coming through this. So we really needed to look at this. It's obviously not delivering in the way we wanted it to. Uh, so what we're looking at now is a more kind of calendar-based feature to choose your date. Um, and then also we're finding that people who are coming in looking for events, it, the, the API pool is pulling a lot of information and it can take a little bit of time to deliver all of that events, event information. So we're looking at ways to kind of clip that a little bit. Do we just show you the top 10 results? Uh, do we kind of sort it in different ways? And so we're really working with Pipestream to kind of develop that uh, and really kind of hone that experience of find an event uh, by date. Um, what's great about this solution, we haven't enacted this yet, but it's uh, Facebook friendly, so we want to put this on our Facebook page, which is, we've done a lot of work on Facebook, so we've really developed our audience there, um, and they're pretty interactive with us on our Facebook page, and so we're really excited to kind of explore the chatbot there and not on uh, LincolnCenter.org and see what the differences are in experience. And then this is just a little example of what Wolfie will look like in his future iteration. Uh, this uh, cute little icon that uh, is a lot more kind of inviting and friendly uh, and gets to a lot of the things we were trying to do here, which was make this 
more personal, more uh, kind of more interactive uh, experience. So that was our chatbot experience. I'd love if you have any questions. I'd uh, love to take any questions you have. Oh, we got one right here in front. Uh, Michael Schmitz, um, BMW Financial Services. So um, we, we have a, a call center as well, um, and it's, it's a major source of questions. One of the challenges we have is sorting through the call reasons to decide what to attack. Uh -huh. Can you kind of expand on that experience a little bit and how you resolve that? So what we did at this, and I'm sure it's not an exact parallel to you, but we spent a lot of time in our scoping period. We brought in people from all across the organization, but largely a lot of people from our center charge group to really kind of talk about what calls they were getting and what kind of questions they were getting. And so we actually started having them kind of log all that information so we could really see what the top priorities were gonna be that Wolfie needed to kind of resolve and help people with. Yeah, you know, it's not comprehensive. There are still people who are like, not gonna get what they need out of Wolfie because it can't be completely comprehensive. But at least going in with that really rich understanding of what people are currently looking for helped us. I have a question. So the, the one on the left is, is Wolfie now and the, the one on the right is Wolfie tomorrow, is, is that right? No, the one, these are both kind of future iterations of oh, Wolfie. Okay. Is, is, little... is he gonna transact? I mean, is Wolfie gonna transact? Ever? You can transact, like if you want to go ahead and buy a ticket, wow. you get trans, because Lincoln Center is a complicated place and all the different constituents have different ticketing systems, so you get, get sent over to one of their ticketing systems to transact. But it's all done, it's pretty seamless experience. Um, you're not transacting in Wolfie though, um, at the moment. We've got a question That's back here kind of the holy grail too. Do you need my mic? Hey there. Oh, hey. Oh. Um, just wondering if you collect any data on the people you're getting uh, your Wolfie's helping out with. That is our next step. I think it's a great kind of learning for us because the, there was a slide I kind of skipped over, which was about our center charge users. So our center charge user, which is our phone service, they tend to skew older than my core audience. And they're kind of my most loyal people. They're my friends of Lincoln Center and they spend a lot of money with us. And so we're trying, that's our kind of, we want to understand how that audience is, is the same or is different from the chatbot audience. We, we have this kind of, I think there's this fallacy out there in the world that, you know, the older audience doesn't go online, they don't use social media. We absolutely don't see that. Our core audience is absolutely, on, which tends to skew older, is absolutely online. They're checking this out. Whether they're using a chatbot and that's kind of a new thing for them, I don't know that yet. We're, we're looking into that. Um, I have another question. Um, is the data that you generate from Wolfie, are you using that in marketing and other platforms and other things like that? Yeah, it's really, we're, we're getting much smarter about kind of leveraging the learnings over here in like a campaign over here. So there's a lot, and I think this is the previous question, as we learn about who's using this and what they're looking for, that's gonna start influencing a lot of our campaigns because this is great kind of patron touch point learning for us. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that, um, will absolutely start infusing everything we're doing in our marketing area because it's just any of these touch points with patrons, I mean, uh, my organization tended to be like, well, the patron was over here and we weren't really kind of learning from them. Anytime we have this kind of rich data set of what people are really looking for, what they're asking about, it does start, in, what, one thing we have seen is, you know, if everyone's looking for My Fair Lady, let's stick that at the prime place on the homepage of LincolnCenter.org. So you can really start seeing, you know, from just word cloud search results, where we should be focusing kind of communication strategy. Right behind me. Oh, there you go. Yeah, um, I love the uh, cocktail option on the app at Lincoln Center where uh -huh. you can pre-order drinks during the intermission. I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my main point. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the, the person on a panel earlier was talking about how at a hotel resort, the, uh, the chatbot is more than just an engine it's a little bit of like a concierge assistant. Uh -huh. And so does Wolfie have any aspirations to be more than just this uh, liaison where maybe it could be almost, um, it, it could give them more information about Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Yeah. It, could, uh, it could just be something that accompanies them throughout their journey. 
Well, I think the next step, absolutely, that's our kind of aspiration here. I think connecting Wolfie into patron data is would be a ne great next step. So that it actually starts understanding who you are and that, well, you've been to three Mahler symphonies, maybe you'd be interested in this next show coming up. Um, that's absolutely where I see this going, is kind of really understanding that a little bit more. We are developing, um, you know, it's really interesting when you start kind of working with something like this and you start seeing opportunities for it. So kind of as a separate project, we were starting to develop a kind of decision tree around what event I should go to. So there's a lot of people who say they want to go to Lincoln Center, but they don't really know what they want to go and see. And they don't want to take a risk and they want to be felt made to feel like they have made a wise, informed choice. And so we started developing with another company like a... Uh, kind of kind of a concierge that you'd ask a few it would ask you a few questions and then it would make recommendations of what to go and see well this is the perfect platform for that um, it's ideally set up to kind of go through that experience with someone and be more of a concierge uh, and kind of learn too about who you are and what you want uh, and what you're gonna like coming up okay I think we're out of time Peter that was terrific thanks very much thank you thank you thank you, thank you.